truly. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Obscure, well, sort of obscure, toys from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Savage Mondo Blitzers, Kenner, 1992. The inch and a half tall Savage Mondo Blitzers were small plastic figures mounted on four-wheeled metal skateboard types. They were marketed towards boys and featured all the gross-out, violent, offensive attributes boys tended to gravitate towards. In 1992, Kenner had a bit of a controversy on their hands. Their Savage Mondo Blitzers toy line was doing exactly what it had hoped it would do, offend parents, teachers, and pretty much any other adult it came across. Many parent groups spoke out about the toys because the figures had guns, knives, and other weapons. Congo, the movie, Kenner, 1995. Lost in the deepest reaches of the jungle lies a dark secret. Journey with the heroic Congo explorers to the lost city of Zinj with its legendary diamond mines. So that's the write up of the toys and the movie. I couldn't even find a commercial for this toy line. The toy line came out to coincide with the movie which featured most of the human characters, a few of the variations of the killer gorillas, and of course Amy the talking gorilla. There's a reason we don't remember this one guys, it was just really obscure. And I checked a few fan sites, apparently this Amy uh, had a talking function, but it's kind of debatable if it actually really existed. Willow by Tonka, 1988. The toys were non-posable, unmovable, and came permanently attached to a resin stand. You couldn't really call them action figures, they were more like miniatures from a role-playing game. The series saw a total of 14 basic figures, three of which were variations of Willow himself. Standard packs came with one character, but there were three combo packs. The three combo packs usually came with a horse riding character, again, non-posable. They looked more like something that you would put on a shelf just to admire rather than play with. Indiana Jones Adventures, Kenner, 1982. Kenner initially released four characters for Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first Indiana Jones movie. Something special about the Indiana Jones toys was Indy actually had whip action and the figures had bending knees, which was new at the time. The toy line was mildly successful and warranted second and third waves, but by the time Temple of Doom rolled around, LJN was in control. Nothing domestically was ever made for The Last Crusade, although cheaper versions of the toys were released outside the US. Another one from Kenner, 1991, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. So the toy line again coincides with the Kevin Costner movie. Now the funny thing is, uh, there were two versions of Robin Hood, one that looked like Kevin Costner and then a generic Robin Hood. Now what this toy line is famous, or maybe infamous for, is recycling toy parts. Many of the Merry Men and Robin Hood himself have been put together by a lot of parts from DC Universe characters. And even the Sherwood Forest playset is a direct ripoff of the Ewoks playset from Star Wars. And rounding out Kenner's Hit Parade 1981 Star Wars Micro Collection. The Micro Collection for Star Wars figures were painted, non-movable, and they were one inch and a quarter tall. They were the right size to fit in with larger playsets that would have been too expensive to release at the three and three quarter line. That was the main reason for creating these. Kenner was really banking on this toy line to take over from the three and three quarter inch figures. They heavily promoted it in commercials and catalogs. The toy line was never really successful, as they only wound up making nine playsets and four vehicles. A few reasons are cited for why the toy line didn't actually succeed. One, they figured parents just weren't going to be tricked into buying another line of Star Wars toys for their kids. And two, being the beginning of the 80s now, other toy lines were coming out that were appealing to children. A pretty big one being Masters of the Universe. And finally, this toy line was never made available in Europe, although you could go roundabout ways to pick it up nowadays. So, that's gonna do it for another video, guys. This was obscure, well, sort of obscure toy lines from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Now, being that this is the second channel, and this is video games, toys, and more, I've been asked by a few people to start incorporating board games. Now, if you saw Obscure Toys 10, you would have seen that we did flip siders and we did the table talk hockey for the Ninja Turtles. So, in the comments, I need to know, would you like to see some obscure board games? 
maybe some other toys, some things that are more rare, harder to find, different stories. I'd like to hear from you guys because I don't want carbon copy videos on two different channels, if you know what I mean. Anyway guys, thanks a lot for watching and whatever we decide, I'll see you in about two weeks.